right, everyone, I'm hoping this is working. It's been quite the, the night and day. Um, I just, I'll give some background of what the heck is going on here. So I've had lots of technical issues today. I'm doing a Facebook Live from our living room. Um, my first technical issue was that I forgot to check the SD card before church this morning and didn't realize it was going to run out of space. So partway through the service, it stopped recording. Uh, then tonight, when I went to try to make up for it by doing Facebook Live, for whatever reason, uh, it wasn't playing nice for me on the laptop. So after spending about 50 minutes fighting with it, I am instead attempting to do things through uh, my tablet. So but please bear with me. It's not the best setup, but I'm still glad to be here to offer worship with you. So... In worship uh, this morning and for today, uh, we're celebrating what the church refers to as Rural Life Sunday. According to the United Church, this day calls the church to celebrate its heritage, to affirm worldwide the people and communities who work with and on the land by raising food and fiber, and to recognize the ongoing crisis occurring in rural areas of the nation and the world today. And so as we mark this day together, Our service will focus on one of the principles of the seven, one of the seven principles of food sovereignty. And the seven principles are focus on food, value food providers, localize food systems, put, con put control locally, build knowledge and skills, work with nature, and recognize that food is sacred. And so our, our focus today is on that last one, recognizing that food is sacred. And so just to begin, I am going to share our announcements for uh, this week. I'll first share that the bulletins for May are, in the, in, are dedicated to the glory of God and are in loving memory of the following people. Angus, Eva, sons Calvin and Arnold McLennan, Greta Grigg and Heath McLennan by Ruth McLennan and family. May Hardy by the family. Mary Howard and Wendell Gillis by Wayne and Janice Trousdale and Isabel Hutchinson by Helen and Elmer Hutchinson and family. We do have a few vacancies uh, coming up on our committees. We need a chair for the official board. Our VBS committee needs a representative from Bitterford Conway. Our nominations need somebody for, from Bitterford Con Conway and Tyne Valley. And then we need from Tyne Valley a stewards rep, session rep, M&P rep, and someone to sit on outreach. So if you're interested in any of these, please reach out and let me know. As well, I had shared a few weeks ago through our Minute for Mission the uh, Gifts with Vision, and it was Gifts for Ukraine, so being able to support gift packs uh, for refugees who are fleeing the situation there. And so you can go to giftswithvision.ca for that. We'll be celebrating our graduates coming up on Sunday, June 26, following our morning service. And so if you know of anyone graduating high school or from a post-secondary program, uh, please submit their names and details to me by June the 19th. And uh, I, do, I do encourage sending that to me by email or calling. It's easier than uh, for me to remember if I'm in a position to write it down. We're also going to be having Walk United coming up in a few weeks on June the 5th, and that will be following our morning service. And so if you would like a pledge sheet, please, you can reach out to myself or any of our stewards, and we can make plans to get that to you. They're also available at the back of the church. Some meetings coming up. Uh, the COVID planning group and official board will be meeting uh, this Tuesday evening. And so the plan is that the COVID group will meet just before the board meeting. So we're going to meet at 6.30 with official board uh, then being held at 7. Session is having a meeting on Tuesday, May 31st at 7. And all these meetings are in the meeting room. Camp Abbey is having a cleanup day on May 28th starting at 9 a.m. And so if you're able to help out for an hour or more, they would love to have you drop by. Vacation Bible School. I wanted to share an important update on what will be happening for this year. And so our committee met um, this past week, and I'll start by sharing that it is a very small committee. There's only about four people on it. 
And so after a lot of prayerful discussion, we made the decision that we will not be holding the Ecumenical Vacation Bible School program for this year. It was not an easy decision to come to. Uh, we came to this decision for a couple of reasons. One was the ongoing COVID uh, situation, because last year we only had about seven or eight children actually attend. And the other has is that basically, as I said, we have a very small committee. And unfortunately, there just isn't the people power or the energy there to um, provide the oversight to lead the program. Because part of the work we've been doing is having a student through the Canada Summer Jobs Program. And that requires the ability to supervise the student. And we just didn't have uh, that in place for this year. We do hope, though, that uh, with this hiatus, that perhaps uh, next year we'll have some renewed energy and we'll find ourselves in a better position to continue this important ministry. Lot 14 is having a congregational meeting on Monday, uh, May the 30th, following, uh, sorry, not following anything, Monday, May 30th in the evening at Lot 14 United to hear quotes regarding the roof. Finally, I wanted to just share sympathies. Uh, many of you may already be aware of the death of Dorothy Drummond, who was a longtime uh, member of our charge and in particular Tyne Valley. And so we certainly remember her and many of you may recall the many mittens that she has knitted over the years and donated to um, our mitten tree, which then went out to local schools and other programs to keep hands warm uh, in the winter. And so we certainly uh, extend our sympathy with the family at this time. The other sympathy information I wanted to share is that this past week I was contacted by a Donald Thompson of Scarborough, Ontario, and he asked that I share with you the death of his wife, Myrtle Elaine Thompson, who would have been a Barlow, so Myrtle Barlow. Uh, she had her roots here in our, in our community. Her parents would have been Howard and Addie Barlow, and her brother Stan is still in the area. And so um, her, her funeral was this past week in Ontario. Uh, her husband also shared that she always held on to strong memories of being in the choir at Bitterford growing up. And so we hold them in our prayers as well. So now let us gather for worship. Taken from the earth like lumps of clay, made from the soil, molded and fashioned, worked and reworked like lumps of clay. People of God, look around you and see what God has made, creations of beauty. The birds of the air, the fish of the sea, are creations of joy. Every star, every planet, every atom, every quark are creations of love. As part of this love-given, joy-filled, beautiful creation, let us give thanks to the potter who gave us life and form. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us pray. Creating God, provide us with all that we need to grow into who you have created us to be. As the womb of the earth nourishes seeds, may we be nourished by this gathered community and the assurance of your holy presence. As the sun provides energy leading seeds to transformation, may we find the courage to embrace new life through the example of Jesus. As water refreshes and replenishes growing seedlings May we be restored by the movement of the Spirit. In times of drought, when we cannot feel your warmth or taste your goodness, protect us from harmful attitudes and actions that may secure our well-being at the cost of others, and lead us again to abundant life. We pray this in the name of the one who taught us to pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So as I mentioned earlier, our service today invites us to think about how food is sacred. And one of the ways in which food comes into being is through seeds. The seeds that we plant, 
seeds that fall from already living plants and trees, all of which grow into aspects of creation that protect, shelter, and nourish. And so as a part of our service, we're going to take some time to meditate on seeds and the ways they connect us to the divine. And so I'm going to invite you to just sit, rest your body, find a comfortable position, and to join with me in this. And some of these things, if you feel like answering in the comments of our video, you're welcome to do that, but there's no pressure. Uh, I'll, I'll put some questions out there for us to think about. So how do you define sacred? When I think of the word sacred, I think of something that's awe-inspiring. Something that reminds me of the divine and helps me to feel closer and more connected. Sometimes it's something, sometimes it's something big and beautiful like a stained glass window, or the simplicity of the Bible and the stories contained within. Other times it's something small, but that still reminds me of how amazing God is. So can you think of something that you would say is sacred? Something that is set apart or respected or cherished or awesome? How does it point to God's awesomeness? Seeds are sacred. Seeds are a constant reminder that God is always creating in ordinary and extraordinary ways. Seeds, although small, are filled with hope and the promise and potential for new life. Seeds are vulnerable, and many seeds are reliant on the love and nurture of the rest of creation. Seeds are powerful and have the ability to bring new life and transformation. Seeds are little miracles. They are sacred gifts from God. And for this, we give thanks. So let us pray. These seeds are a present and future gift. Their existence reminds us of the power of dreams to grow in unexpected ways. Their growth will help us celebrate life and God's promise for a world where all are fed and all are loved. May these seeds remind us all that we too are sacred seeds planted in God's garden. Thank you, God, for the gift of these seeds. Amen. So now I'll share words of scripture for today. Our first reading comes from Genesis chapter 2, verses 5 to 9. When no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground. But a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden and in the east. And there he put the man whom he had formed, out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant for the sight and good for food. The tree of life in, also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And now from Psalm 65. Praise is due to you, O God, in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed, O you who answered prayer. To you all flesh shall come. When deeds of iniquity overwhelm us, you forgive our transgressions. Happy are those whom you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, your holy temple. By awesome deeds you answer us with deliverance, O God of our salvation. You are the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. 
By your strength you established the mountains, you are girded with might. You silence the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, the tumult of the peoples. Those who live at earth's farthest bounds are awed by your signs. You make the gateways of the morning and the evening shout for joy. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide the people with grain, for so you have prepared it. You water its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges, softening it with showers, and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty. Your wagon tracks overflow with richness. Pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. And I'm going to share two readings from our Gospels today. The first is a much shorter one from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 31 to 32. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree. So the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. And finally, from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verses 1 to 9. Again, Jesus began to teach beside the sea. Such a very large crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat on the sea and sat there, while the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. He began to teach them many things in parables, and in his teaching he said to them, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where it did not have much soil, and it sprang up quickly, since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. Other seed fell into good soil and brought forth grain, growing up and increasing and yielding thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. And he said, Let anyone with ears to hear, listen. These are the, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So let us pray. O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So at the beginning of our service, I introduced our theme, which is to celebrate rural life and the beauty that exists within our communities and the life that exists within our communities. In particular, our focus is on the ways in which so many of us work the land for a living, through fishing or the variety of forms of farming. As well, many of us also enjoy having personal gardens in the summer to grow a variety of vegetables and flowers, which means that the earth and waters are an important part of who we are. I'm sure for many of you, it's difficult to imagine doing anything else because of your love for the land and sea. It's an integral part of who you are as it provides nourishment for yourself and for so many others. And so our theme today invites us to not just see the beauty, but to see all of it as sacred. Where the food we grow and catch is as sacred as the earth and the trees. And our scripture readings for today invite us to see this as well. All four of our readings lift up creation as being a part of God, our creator, while also reminding us of the beauty and power of what comes from it. In particular, our reading from the Gospel of Matthew invites us to consider the power of a seed, in particular that of the mustard seed. Now, it's a short parable of Jesus that focuses on offering an image for what God's kingdom is meant to look like. But this passage also helps us to pause and consider the gift of a seed for our everyday life. So Jesus speaks about the mustard seed, saying, It's the smallest of all the seeds. When it, when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree. 
And so this passage reminds us of how great things can come from something small like a seed. As anyone who has farmed or planted a garden knows, there is great life inside a seed. Life which, depending on the type of seed, can offer protection and shelter for animals, or can turn into food that nourishes living things, which is awe-inspiring when we take the time to think about it. We take a simple seed that is small and delicate, and we bury it in the darkness of the soil. And starting out just with a little bit of water, the seed breaks open and new life begins. With additional care and love along with water and sunlight, that new life grows and grows into something that becomes so important to life itself. A flower that brings beauty, a tree that protects and provides a home for animals, or food that nourishes all living things. We can't help but be amazed at what we see happening before our very eyes, which is why our service invites us to see all life, including the food that nourishes us as sacred, from the fish of the sea to the birds of the air and animals of the land, to the small seeds that grow upon the earth, all are sacred and help connect us with the divine. And so Jesus reminds us of this with his parable by inviting us to be awe-inspired by what seeds do. Jesus invites us to see this amazing gift that comes from seeds and other forms of nourishment so that we might cherish them and care for them. For all of creation is interconnected. We need each other in order to thrive. We rely on the earth and all creation to provide us with nourishment and water and clean air. And they rely on us to continue to grow and thrive as well. And so we're called to be caretakers of this great creation, which is a part of what it means to live off the land. For those of you who work the land and seas, I'm sure you know the importance of providing care for that which provides life. From understanding the needs of the earth to keep it fertile and life-giving, to ensuring that fish and sea life are able to thrive in clean waters. It's not possible to work the land without caring for it, otherwise creation becomes no longer able to produce, and in turn we're no longer able to be nourished, all of which is a sacred task that draws us closer to God our Creator. For when we care for creation, we're caring for ourselves and showing our love to God. Which is why it's so important to pause in our day-to-day -day lives and to see the ways in which all of this is sacred and awe-inspiring. To truly hold within our hearts the gift that is creation. The gift that is a tiny seed, a small plant or fish, the soil, the water. And so returning to that image of a seed, when we hold it in our hands or look at it, we're invited to take time to be amazed by all that it offers. Now, I shared a bit of this quote earlier in that meditation, uh, and this is from Olivia Smith, who is the one that created our service for today. And as she puts it, seeds are sacred. Seeds are a constant reminder that God is always creating in ordinary and extraordinary ways. And the same is true for all life. All life is sacred and beautiful, reminding us of the ways in which God continues to be present in this world through us, through the animals, through the earth. For God is a part of all that is, you and me, the wild animals and the pets that comfort us, fish of the sea and the tiny seed and plant that they will become. And so, as we celebrate rural life and the creation that surrounds us and nourishes us, I invite you to take our meditation on the sacredness of the seed and to think about your own experiences. What aspects of creation do you view as sacred? Take time to think about the ways in which you connect with the divine through creation. When you've planted a garden or fished or farmed, what memories do you have of those experiences? Where did you see and feel God? Because I'm sure I'm not the only one who can recall a special memory of creation, whether it's through working the land and sea or through its beauty. Speaking for myself, I can remember as a child having a fascination with tulips. At her home in Yarmouth, which was the church manse, tulips would line the walkway to the front door. And so there were steps up, and then there was this beautiful long walkway, and then, of course, the, the steps to the door. And so that walkway was lined with tulips every spring. 
So I can always remember the sight of them coming up and coming to life in the, in, in the spring. I always associated it with my birthday, although my guess is that the timeline was a little bit more further apart than I realized. But what I remember is how much I loved the bright colors of them, but especially the way in which they really would open up, because tulips are a flower that when they open, you can truly see all the parts of that flower, to really see it in more detail. And I remember always loving that. I think even as a young child, I could see that there was something sacred and amazing about tulips and flowers in general. The way they would come back year after year, pushing through the cool spring ground to remind us of new life. Even if they're not always cared for, they just seem to come back. And so to this day, that image of that walkway is sort of my picture-perfect image of what I'd have for a front doorway if I ever had the power to create my own space in that way. And now what I've come to be delighted about is that this year I've seen my own son become awestruck by the tulips here at this manse, at our home. He's really loving to see them grow and open up this spring as I used to. And he's very clearly filled with wonder of one who is seeing the world with new eyes. And so that's my own personal memory. But whatever has come to mind for you, I invite you to hold on to it. And again, you're welcome to share that in your comments if you'd like. But hold those memories in mind and let them remind you of God, our creator, who is present with us always. And as we continue in this season of new life, keep your eyes open. Because all around us, new life is springing forth through the natural processes of the earth, but also through our communities as so many of us once again, work the land and fish from the seas. So remember the joys and the beauty, the sacredness of living and working within God's creation as you go about your day. And as you remember, know that God, the God who is in creation is also in you and with you, for we are never alone. God, our creator, is present and active always. And for this, we give thanks. So let us pray. Creating God, we celebrate the life-giving bonds we have with all you have created. We give you thanks for the care that we can give and receive as your creatures. We give you thanks for the land upon which we dwell, land that nourishes body, mind, and soul. God of creation, may we farm wisely, respecting our land and the life it gives. We thank you for water which fills the slough and flows in river and brook. God of creation, help us to care for the water, keeping it pure and safe. We thank you for the air which gives life to us and to all that moves. God of creation, may we live and work in ways that keep the air clean and fresh. We thank you for seeds and crops, plants and trees. God of creation, help us to sow reverently and harvest wisely. We thank you for birds and animals, the fish of the sea, which nourish us. God of creation, as we care for and breed birds and animals, we, may we remember that they, like us, reflect your love. Amen. So now it's this point in our service where we pause and lift up our gifts. So we offer to God our sacred treasures, trusting that they will be transformed to do more than we could ever hope or imagine. And I will note that if you are wanting to share your gifts with our pastoral charge, you can reach out to any of our treasurers. Marie Barlow for Tyne Valley, uh, Marilyn McQuaid for Lot 14, and Rhonda Miller for Bitterford Conway. So let us pray. We thank you, God, for the circle of life the cycle of receiving and giving, and the cycle of seed time and harvest. Bless these gifts that we now present, trusting in their future promise. Amen. So now, it's been wonderful to be with you all, even if it's been through lots of ups and downs and not quite as I had originally hoped, but I am glad that we've been able to have this time together. And so, as this time draws to a close, Go appreciating the beauty and promise of all things sacred.
go knowing that we cannot hold on to the glimpses of beauty we experience, but go thankful for the gifts that such beauty brings. And may the deep nourishing soil of God's grace, the radiant warmth of Christ's love, and the restoring power of the Spirit be with us all as we spread God's glory wherever it is we're planted. Amen.